Hi mum, you do everything for everyone else. Let me help you make your life easier. Quick, short information to make you empowered and remind you why you are so important. Because if you don't know what's on the menu, how can you choose what's right for you? Hi, I'm Alina, director of my private practice, Supportive Therapy. An everyday Aussie mum trying not to lose my biscuits and my kids. As a mental health professional, I'm here to share my secrets so no other mother feels alone or powerless. Knowledge is power, and I want you to be powerful. Think of it like I'm your mindset coach through all of this. Everything is backed by science and psychology. I believe in you, and I want you to be the best version of yourself. To be happy and to feel in control, you need to be mentally strong. Hello everyone, my name is Elena and I'm from Mentally Strong Mums. So today we're going to be talking about relationships and bringing back the spark. And it can be difficult because sometimes we have this beautiful honeymoon phase and everything seems lovely and wonderful. And then over the years, things change. We obviously have children if you're listening to Mentally Strong Mums. And how we can either sometimes stay together or we can feel like we drift apart. And there's this amazing saying that if you do not address your childhood traumas, your romantic relationships will. And so this is about understanding yourself and how in the beginning of relationships, it can be something that we're looking for. But then after a couple of years together, understanding if we're growing and evolving together, or if our past sometimes come up and we're triggered and it can haunt us. There's this amazing, uh, it's a little concept. So if you can imagine both your fingers intertwined together, it's called symbiosis. So your palms are together, your fingers are interlocked. That's called symbiosis. And that's generally at the beginning of relationships where everything is lovely, we've got all this stuff in common, we want to spend all this time together. During this time, we can either continue on this path, otherwise it can be difficult because sometimes it can feel like we're getting quite codependent on each other as well. The test of a true long-term healthy relationship they call is differentiation. So imagine your fingers interlocked and intertwined, which is symbiosis. Separate your hands so they're two separate fists. Fists? It's really difficult for me to say. Called differentiation. So that means that each person still has their own identity. They're still free to do whatever they want to do. So their activities, their hobbies. The other person is there to support them throughout this. And we both understand when it's time to come back together again. But we definitely need this unconditional positive regard for each other. So maintaining the spark in long-term relationships can be hard work. It is hard work. There was this lovely saying that if your marriage isn't being held by thread, is it even a marriage? (laughs) That always made me laugh because there's always times in our relationships where it does feel like it's hanging from a thread. So understanding when it does feel like that, it isn't all part of marriage, but it is a fabulous indicator of something needs to improve, something needs to change, and how can we get back onto the same page? Especially when it comes to intimacy, when the intimacy isn't as frequent anymore, it's also sometimes an indicator that I don't feel emotionally safe with this person. Because when I do feel emotionally safe with this person, it means that I can be vulnerable. I am willing to let down my walls. I can open up and express my boundaries. And then I can be extremely vulnerable to ask for what I need. And when they give me things, I can accept and receive. And it's very difficult sometimes if I don't feel like I can accept and receive what the other person's giving me because I don't feel like emotionally safe enough to go along with that letting down my walls it can be yeah so if we have a habit of avoiding conflict or sweeping things under the rug or even shutting down because we feel attacked and we have to understand when we do that we don't feel emotionally safe so how can we get back on 
And it's interesting because as humans, we all want love. That's how we are wired, safety in numbers. And we all want to feel special. We all want to feel like the person in our life genuinely loves us and chooses us first. We still need to be desired. And a lot of, cause I do obviously therapy for couples and marriages. And a lot of the time women will come in and say, you're not doing this for me, you're not doing that for me. But it's also the man that cries out going, I don't feel like you desire me anymore. Everything seems to be on your terms and I don't feel like you desire me. So it's almost understanding that both people, even though we might have our facades or we're hurt or we have our walls, we both are together for a reason and we need to make the most of the time that we have together. Life's very short. Sometimes I use the analogy with clients, you know, Max, the puppy from the movie, The Secret Life of Pets, he gets really worried because sometimes when our loved ones leave us for the day, have they forgotten about us? Have they gone? Do they even know? Like how long has this been, right? Sometimes we forget that our partner actually loves us. We just assume the other person knows, we take it for granted. So how can we make a secure relationship with each other so we always remember that we are loved and respected and we don't take this for granted. And this, a really easy understanding of this is called love rituals. Love rituals, which we will talk about more in depth later, are little rituals within the relationship we do to prove or show as evidence that I love you, that I'm thinking of you. So it could be text messages in the morning, have a good day, especially if you've got a tradie hubby and he leaves at the crack of dawn, I was gonna say at the crack of a bird's fight. When he leaves really early and you don't see him, have a good day. Even making lunch for someone with a little love note in it, with a sticky note. Just little love rituals. Every time that we come together, we always give each other a kiss. So yeah, little love rituals. And even if you wanted to Google 20 love rituals that I could implement into my family, it will give you a whole list of things and then we can negotiate on the same page because as soon as these little love rituals die it makes it a lot harder for it to come back again so firstly let's discuss what can hurt the relationship before we learn how to build up our relationship so there's a Gottman Institute which is American it's one of the world's leading relationships institute in the world about relationships and they've done so much research and they suggest yeah his name's John Gottman. So he suggests, he's it's quite old actually, and even though the Gottman Institute is amazing and it's lovely, I still feel in Australian culture it's not always relevant. So that's a little controversial little nugget right there for you, okay? So John Gottman suggests there are four predictors to separation. So if you can, if these four things that I'm about to tell you are happening in your relationship quite frequently, especially weekly or daily, and they happen for a very long time without resolution, these four things, there is a huge predictor that the relationship isn't in a good place and it's a predictor of divorce or separation. So number one is criticism. When the other person feels like they're giving you attacks or they're judging you negatively and they're just really critical of you all the time. It doesn't matter what you say, what you do. It's just attacks and criticism, not feeling good enough. Number two is stonewalling. Stonewalling is, looks like a, if you could have an invisible wall. So stonewalling is walking away during conversation chooses not to engage, completely ignoring me, that's stonewalling. Number three is defensiveness. So if you want to be open and talk about something or be honest about something or put up a boundary, the other person is automatically really defensive, 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 defensive. All I want to do is have a conversation, but everything is defensive and aggressive. Number four is contempt. Contempt can look like ridicule or mock or sarcastic. 
Sometimes it can also feel like gaslighting. It was only a joke. Lighten up, you know? So those are the four predictors of separation or divorce. Criticism, stonewalling, defensiveness, and contempt. So if we in our relationship are realizing that we are doing this, it's we have to start reevaluating what is important and why we're doing it. Because sometimes, as I said in the beginning, it's that childhood trauma, reliving patterns or repeating things that I saw that seemed normal to me because that's all I know. So these can lead to your partner feeling abandonment or rejection. They are not valid or heard within their relationship. And it's really difficult because if this happens a lot, it's like we're on two separate islands and they keep getting further and further apart. So their opinion, it feels like sometimes is not important and then they're an inconvenience or a burden to me in some way. And then it increases the distance between partners because I can't be vulnerable and I can't connect with you anymore. That's that emotionally safe. I can't be vulnerable and open up with my emotions because I don't trust you with them because you're going to throw it in my face somehow or use it against me somehow because you will hurt me. We will then feel like we need to save face. Have you heard of that? Save face. And I have to put up my wall and not be vulnerable and act a certain way, have a facade so that I can't be open to hurt and I don't want to feel like I'm weak in any way. Otherwise, some people will just shut down and completely withdraw. Some people will look for other people for, and so then that's when everything reinforces and then it snowballs so fast that it gets it really difficult to actually woo up and bring back. So when we have been burnt, the pain is all too familiar that you don't want it to happen again. And no one likes to be hurt, okay? And especially when we don't have the communication tools in our little toolbox, we are constantly getting triggered or repeating generational cycles of our parents. So it can be really difficult to see that there is a problem. So everyone has a metaphorical toolbox. And this toolbox are things that I've either learned or I've witnessed. And so when an uncomfortable or difficult situation happens, I will open up the toolbox to figure out what I need to be able to fix the situation, resolve the situation, or how I need to act in a certain situation. And if your toolbox is all the things that your parents parented you, and they weren't healthy and they were negative and they were those four different criticisms, stonewalling, defensiveness and contempt. Sometimes if I haven't evolved and learnt my own authentic way of being a parent or a partner or whatever that looks like, I can open up my toolbox and then I start throwing out the tools of the negative things that I have learned or witnessed. Sometimes because what is normal when I was growing up isn't, doesn't look like a red flag in relationships. So if I've grown up with real red flags of things that you shouldn't do to each other, they don't actually look bad. They look normal. And so the good, healthy, loving, mutually beneficial behaviors within a relationship can actually then seem dangerous and scary because all I'm used to are the, you know. And so it's understanding as well, when I grew up, what behaviors, actions, words were actually normalized? And as an adult, what won't I accept any? And do I actually accidentally repeat those negative things to my current partner? And how can I stop? Why do I do that? Okay, what am I actually protecting? So generally speaking, we do have a predictable cycle in relationships where the first person is not feeling valued, appreciated or respected or respected. They will then criticize their partner. So sometimes if we aren't emotionally mature to talk about things, this criticism can feel like you don't love me enough. You don't prioritize me. How come you're always at work and never with me? How can you always greet the kids? with happiness and you're excited to see them but you don't do that to me why do you you know 
So sometimes that can feel like a criticism because I don't know how else to ask for my love. But to their partner, it will feel like an unprovoked attack that comes out of nowhere. So if this has been happening for a while, I've been spiraling, ruminating, obsessing over it for ages, right? And the next thing you know, I've criticized it's blurted out of my mouth to my partner. My partner's like, whoa, where did that come from? And then because they feel like they've been blindsided with this criticism that's come out of nowhere, they will then follow with defensiveness, which is part of that predictability behavior. And now if someone's defensive, you're critical, you're not going to be on the same page. It's going to be uncomfortable. Both parties are now completely dysregulated. And now we're there into their either flight, fight, freeze or fawn responses. We are literally not able to be in the moment. We're not able to be rational. We can't understand the consequences of our actions or our words. And then sometimes we say things that we regret in that moment. And the worst thing is, as soon as you say something you regret, it's, it's out there forever. So when we do get into these arguments, how do we then repair the rupture in our connection? Do you like that? Because essentially, this little conflict is like a rupture, like a volcano, okay? We need to repair ruptures. How can we make each other feel safe again? So when we can learn our own bodies and why we are triggered, that's essentially healing all of our childhood trauma, we can then understand how to soothe ourselves and regulate our nervous systems into feeling safe again. So we can engage in a healthy conversation and that's the repair. We need to repair because it's inevitable there's always going to be conflict with you, with your partner, with your friends, with your children. And that's fine. But how do we actually come back and repair so that we can genuinely leave it in the past, learn from our lessons, respect each other and move forward not to repeat the same cycles? This is essentially building our own toolbox. So remember the toolbox in the beginning with all the things that we've learned from others that aren't constructive or positive or relevant anymore? We need to start building our toolbox with things that we want to put in there. So it's flushing out the old, ringing in the new. And one of the new tools that we can have in our toolbox is repair the rupture. Rupture. So we can then learn that being vulnerable, open and emotionally exposed isn't scary. If our partner is able to respectfully receive us, so this is also learning about our own emotional needs. So if we don't know what they are, we can't ask for them. What are your emotional needs? What do you need from your partner? The best thing about a healthy relationship is understanding and meeting each other's emotional needs. And this is especially important in your children because you can essentially give your children all the love and all the attention that you can but if you're not meeting their specific needs, it, it feels like for them that you're not doing anything right, okay? And you're confused because I'm giving you all my good stuff, right? So that's about understanding we're all individual, we're all different. Just because you perceive love is this, it doesn't mean the other person's doing it. So we all un have to understand that we're different and the other person's going to give you love in a different way that you give someone else love. I hope that makes sense. Okay. This is a really good little section. I love this guy. Okay. So have you heard of love languages? So if you haven't, there are like a thousand online quizzes, quizzes to try and find out what yours is. Okay. And what your partner's is. So what we do for each other to make them feel loved is our love language. So there's five different lo um, love languages. So number one, words of affirmation. So that's, I love you. You are so amazing. Thank you so much for your help. I think you're so special. I couldn't do that without you. Words of affirmation. Two, physical touch. Kisses, cuddles, holding hands. Is it PDA? Public display of affections. 
all the stuff, just kind of being in each other's energy. Number three, quality time. Making time for, to spend together. Could be walks, could be sitting in front of the TV, could be date nights, could be just quality time together. Number four, acts of service. This is really common for men and their love language to their partner is acts of service. So that could be mowing the lawn, taking out the bin, doing things to show the other person that they're lightening their load and they're carrying stuff on their shoulders. And number five is receiving gifts. So when you see the flowers, you buy it. <clears throat> when you see a little chocolate bar, you do that. Receiving gifts. So the five are words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, receiving gifts. So the funny thing is, what our love language is, is generally not the same as our partner. So when we are not getting what we give, we feel disconnected that our partner is not giving us love. But they are, but in their own love language. So this is about that emotional maturity and boundaries is to sit down and figure out part of my toolbox as well, when they're upset or when I want to show love, what do they need? So that we're not withholding or it's not a tit for tat thing, okay? And also understanding what their attachment style is and how to make them feel safe. So obviously there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. We are all different and we all have different needs. It can be uncomfortable sometimes when we compare ourselves to other people who look like they've got it all together or they all dress the same or they all go on dates all the time or whatever that is, okay? You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. And if, it, if you're not hanging by a thread, is it even a real relationship, okay? So that's a joke. I hope you kind of understood that. I'm ridiculous. So it's also understanding how, what I need in the relationship to feel loved, how we can make time for each other. If the other person is being vulnerable and opening up, sometimes it can be really difficult to hear how I'm disappointing the other person, but being able to be really present and invite honest, brutal conversations so that we're able to grow together. The worst thing is having secrets and not being able to feel safe to tell the other person how I feel. Or when conflict happens, we just push it under the rug and pretend as if it never existed and then keep on repeating everything or just drifting further apart. When you're in this position, there is so much you can both do together that it's understanding that we both need to be vulnerable and commit to each other, that we want to give it a go and we want to try. And if the other person doesn't, why? Is it because they're afraid of being vulnerable? Is it they're afraid of rejection? Is it they're trying to save face? Is it because they they have no idea what you're talking about and they're actually too proud to admit that I don't know? It can be very difficult, okay? And so... With all of our relationships, we have to know what we need. So, in relationships, it's a feeling that gives someone that genuinely cares about us, that we still voluntarily want to make an effort with each other. Like we did in the honeymoon phase, you remember that symbiosis? Then our beautiful connections will lead to intimacy. So knowing our partner won't hurt us. They understand us and then they won't use things against us. We can move forward. This is the definition of secure attachment. And just before I go, I've been listening to Tony Robbins, a motivational speaker. And he said the one thing that changed his entire relationship was, it's called honey, I'm home energy, right? Honey, I'm home. So... I don't like saying that. I feel like a silly billy, right? When you have honey on home energy, everyone's got a big day, especially if you're a stay-at-home mum with the kids in the house, the house is never clean, you can't actually get a break ever, even though, you know, you're at home. The to-do list is for long. And then if you work full-time or even part-time, 
all the stuff you need to juggle, trying to get everything, the school pickups, the group, blah, 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 right? We're all tired. So when we come home, when we see our partner, you have to say, honey, I'm home, and actually be excited to see the other person. And it's going to be uncomfortable in the beginning because it's going to feel fake. It's going to feel ridiculous like a joke, okay? But the, the theory that he uses is that athletes have muscles because they practice and they grow, so it's second nature to them. So in the beginning, it's going to be uncomfortable and difficult and I'm going to feel like a bit of a silly billy, right? But the more I do it, the more authentic and genuine I am. And then if you understand about energies and frequency and vibration, you're actually increasing the positive vibration in your household. So instead of everyone being low and frustrated and angry and tired and cranky, you know, honey, I'm home come home and it's this fun energy and it's a silliness and I'm actually happy to see you and you give me a big cuddle and it's like I can wash everything else away and it increases the, vi the vibration within the household and then the kids are happy and yeah so that's what he says is secret to his marriage of like 35 40 years just something little fake it till you make it in the beginning get everyone on board but it really, really helps with that connection every single day. So we're especially in the beginning when I spoke about the love rituals, that could be our new love ritual. I think it would be very good. And this is about discipline. Everything about success in life is about discipline and about commitment. So within the relationship, I want to be disciplined to do the love rituals that we've negotiated, to understand your love language and commit to it. When we have a conflict to be able to repair the rupture and then be committed to doing things like ridiculousness honey i'm home energy you know so thank you so much for listening to me i hope you enjoyed today's episode i hope it's a little bit of inspiration or perspective to get things back online again obviously feel free to use my jokes <laughs> And I look forward to meeting with you again soon. I hope you have a fabulous day and thank you so much. Bye, Mum. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire podcast. And for that, I would like to thank you for your support. So you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at supportive therapy underscore. And then you can find heaps of free resources online at www.supportivetherapy.com.au. So if today you did find my information useful, please leave a review and subscribe. By leaving a review, it's a value exchange. It's good karma. So I value your support just as much as you value my free information. And if you liked it, other mums can like it as well, hopefully. And then it can hopefully start a huge movement of people valuing mothers the way that they need to be valued. So please feel free to let me know what topics you would like to see in future episodes. Always feel free to get in touch with me in the comments. Otherwise, follow me on Supportive Therapy social media networks. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day, you beautiful mum.